All right, so for those of you that missed the first class, um, which is understandable considering I didn't give much of a, uh, a notice ahead of time, this is what we did in class. Um, so class is in D8 at 1 o'clock every lunch on Thursday um, from now on. Yep. Um, if you miss it, I'm going to make something like this so you can catch up and you don't get confused in later slides. Um, but I don't think this one will become too important since I'll go over most of this information later. This is just to give you a generally, uh, a general good uh, concept of what you're going to be in for later. So, let's get into it. Um, I'm Keith, and Anise would be standing next to me if we were in the classroom. So our goal is to teach you some really weird math called metamathematics that they don't teach at competitions or in high school or anything like that. They basically only teach it in very specific universities for some reason, if you become a math graduate only. So each class will look sort of like this. I'm just going to shove slides in your face, and you'll occasionally have some activities or something to do and, you know, discuss with each other. Um, sometimes I'll ask you to write answers on the whiteboard. While there is homework, it's completely optional, because I can't reasonably expect somebody to actually turn in homework for a club. But if you are struggling with it or you didn't catch it in class, that's understandable. So here's the ground rules. Please stop walking on me. I'm sentient and can feel your feet individually. I'm in immense pain. Get these chairs off of me right now. Every time an earthquake happens, my skin ruptures in half and melts like a fluid. Hmm. Oh, these are actually the grounds rules. There we go. Alright, next. So what is metamathematics? It just is a really weird sounding pretentious term. Um, but here the we'll go through how it was created first. So have you ever wanted to prove that two plus two equals four? You know that two plus two equals four, but you can't really prove it. Um, it's just sort of intuition based. And this is a problem, because you want everything to be provable from just sort of a, a small bit of statements which are intuitively true. You don't need an intuitively true statement for every, uh, for every true statement. In other words, you don't need to have 2 plus 2 equals 4 be just an axiom. It's intuitively true, therefore it's true. You need to prove it from something else. So you need to define 2 and 4 as objects with plus, and then prove it from those definitions. But how are you going to do that? Well, Ernst Zermelo had this idea. He said, like, maybe everything should be sort of like real life, in that it's made out of small atoms, which are really just elements, and then everything is just sort of a group of those atoms, those elements, together. Um... And so he came up with basically a really big periodic table of elements for all of math. And um, here's what he did. So he developed Zermelo set theory. Here's Zermelo right here. He looks really creepy. And he's doing something weird with his hand on the left side of his face. So he developed a set theory, which uh, he built all of mathematical objects out of it, um, like natural numbers, real numbers, um, Pretty much all of the mathematics we've ever done so far. Group theory, all of that stuff. Um, he made it out of little uh, collections of other objects, little groups of other objects. And he called these sets, although he didn't name it actually. It was named a while before him. But these groups are called sets. So the set A, B, set containing A and B, is the same as B, A. So it's completely unordered doesn't matter where they are in the set, they're both in the set. And the set containing A and itself uh, is just the set containing A. Um, so it doesn't matter how many times the element is in the set, it's just is the element in the set or not. 
Um, so it doesn't matter the order or the number. Um, it was really powerful. Um, using, like, Zermelo set theory is a, a set of rules for how you could develop something, like how you can make a set, what a set is, and um, what a set isn't. Uh, so you can't have a set of all sets, because that could cause something sort of contradictory. Uh, you can't have a set of all sets which don't can contain themselves, because that is just a contradiction. Um, so he, these rules laid out what is a set and what isn't. So... Von Neumann from this made a uh, natural number construction, which we use to these days uh, to represent uh, natural numbers as sets. So zero is just the empty set. It's the set containing nothing. One is the set containing the empty set. So it's the set containing zero. One is the set containing zero. And every natural number is the set of all smaller natural numbers. So you should notice, for any natural numbers x and y, so for example 0 and 1, uh, x is less than y if and only if this is in this, so th uh, x is in y. So 0 is in 1, um, you have that, 0 is in 1, so we have that 0 is less than 1. Um, you know, simple proof, 0 is less than 1. And that's a pretty uh, good point. You now have proved from these axioms that 0 is less than 1. Maybe you could even prove that 2 plus 2 is 4. Um, and here I would ask you to write down the next couple natural numbers as sets. Um, but I can't do that. So instead, I'll just tell you 2 is the set containing 0 and 1. And 3 is the set containing 0, 1, and 2. 4 is the set containing 0, 1, 2, and 3, etc., etc. So Kurt Gödel, um, that's what, who we're going to talk about now. But first we're going to talk a little bit about David Hilbert. Uh, so one time he asked the question, what if mathematics proves a contradiction? What if it proves that 0 equals 1? Eventually that could happen. We don't know if it's true, but it could happen. And if it does we'd be in trouble. That'd be bad. It couldn't suit the real world, because if it could suit the real world, then you'd prove a contradiction about the real world. Something true and false about the real world. And that's a pretty big problem. So when Zermelo introduced his wonderful set theory, which could basically do all of mathematics, um, David Hilbert reasoned a little bit further. He said, as long as Zermelo's set theory doesn't prove a contradiction, so from his set of rules, you can't prove a contradiction, um, neither would any of mathematics. None of mathematics would uh, prove a contradiction. Um, if you could produce a contradiction from mathematics, then you could prove that contradiction in Zermelo's set theory. So if Zermelo's set theory doesn't prove a contradiction, um, mathematics wouldn't either, none of it. So Kurt Gödel answered this question, the question of whether or not mathematics was consistent. And he said, if you can prove that Zermelo's system doesn't prove a contradiction, if you can prove that it's consistent, then it, oddly enough, does prove a contradiction. So it is inconsistent if you can prove that it's consistent. Doesn't mean if it's consistent, it's inconsistent. It means if you can prove that it's consistent, then it isn't consistent. So Ludwig Wittgenstein, uh, he was not a very big fan of this idea. He was like, that's beans. That means you can prove it, and you can at the same time. And um, translated into the modern age, Kurt basically said, uh, he replied something along the lines of, go staple a piece of bread to a tree or something else more productive than this. Um, because it was not very productive what he was doing. He was just refuting uh, a known fact that he proved um, as a paradox and then sort of just saying it's false, which, um, you know, isn't true. He devoted, L Ludwig devoted a lot of time to trying to show that Kurt was wrong. He never did because Kurt is right. 
So he managed to prove that you can't prove something. He managed to prove that if Zermelo's set theory is consistent, it doesn't prove a contradiction, then it doesn't prove that it is consistent. And lots of other people later did. Paul Cohen joined in, um, showing that you can't prove a more specific and more applied thing called the continuum hypothesis. Um, uh, lots of people showed that you can't prove certain things. And uh, we're going to look at what they did and maybe do some of it ourselves too. And that's it.